Hello viewers, welcome to our latest edition of Uncovering India's episode. Today we have a very special uh, topic for discussion and that is mental health and school going children. Mental health as you know is although prevalent very widely but very little spoken about especially when it comes to school going children. Now in that context uh, a recent study has been done uh, by Goa based internationally recognized mental health intervention center Sangat which has uh, come out with a study finding that shows problem solving based counseling delivered by non-specialists can improve an array of stress uh, related stress including problems faced by high school students in India. Now the results from the PRIDE project published in the Lancet Child and Adolescent Health Journal shows these findings. And we have today with us a very special guest, Dr. Vikram Patel, co-founder of Sangat and senior faculty at Harvard University, who will speak to us more about this PRIDE project, the entire issue of mental health and school-going children, especially the younger ones and the adolescents, and what kind of toll has COVID taken on these uh, school-going children who are now stuck up in their house and been forced with online education and what is the way ahead for them. So, good morning sir. Uh, we welcome you to our latest uh, show. We are happy and uh, glad that you are there to honor us. Uh, tell me something about this PRIDE project sir. What is this all about? So, the PRIDE is just the name of a program. Um, uh, it stands, it's got a very interesting acronym, Premium for Adolescents. And why does the word premium come in? Because before Pride, we started this program called Premium in Sangha, whose goal was to design brief psychological treatments for mental health problems that could be delivered in real world settings like primary health care, but not by mental health professionals, by ordinary health workers, like community health workers and lay people. And we successfully developed the first treatment in India for depression, as well as for drinking problems, two different treatments that we demonstrated in Goa's primary health centers led to very impressive results. These uh, uh, treatments are now being utilized not only in India, but also in Western countries. So having this, you know, developed this whole approach of designing these effective treatments, we decided to apply our minds to uh, mental health problems in school settings for adolescents. And that is how Pride was born. And the particular paper you've just described uh, was the result of many years of work of designing a brief treatment or intervention for adolescents who are referring themselves to the counselor in the school because they have stress-related problems. So uh, I suppose the study was undertaken in Delhi schools, some of the prominent Delhi, Delhi uh, government schools. So uh, when we look at this scenario of uh, mental health and adolescents, what kind of scenario are we looking at? What is the kind of prevalence of mental health issues among adolescents, especially school-going adolescents? So Pride has many different uh, uh, you know, interventions that have been tested, not just in Delhi, but also in Goa. Uh, in Goa, for example, we're doing a program of using problem solving, but delivered on smartphones. Okay. So, you know, well, actually tablets. Um, and so students can come in like a lab uh, in the computer, like you have computer labs in schools. So students can come, they have stress-related problems, they sit with a, 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 a teacher who actually just teaches them how to use the smartphone, but actually the entire treatment as it were, which is really building skills for problem solving, is delivered through a game. So in uh, Delhi, uh, we did this in government schools, low income schools, and we, I can tell you that roughly about 5 to 10 percent of the entire student body would have a pretty distressing mental health problem at any point in time. By distressing, I mean that it's been going on for days and weeks, that it is affecting their ability to concentrate on their studies. Um, and that in, very, uh, in some individuals, it is making them feel very depressed and suicidal. Um, so it's not uncommon. About 10% of India's student body is affected by a pretty significant mental health difficulty. So uh, what is the trigger for this? Is it just the peer pressure, study pressure, or is it uh, something else also? Well, you know, one has to see the mental health of every individual, including you and me, as not just the product of what is happening right now, but also the result of what has happened in the past. We now know that the brain is extremely responsive to the environment, especially in the first two decades of life. This means that adversities in our environment, what kind of 
adversities, child neglect, uh, very serious physical illness, the loss of a parent, etc. Violence, of course. Um, when you experience these in the early years of your life, the chances that you will be vulnerable for mental health problems is much greater in later life. So when we see mental health problems at the age of 16, it is both the result of what is happening right now, for example, study stress, uh, um, you know, stresses to do with friendships with other people in the school, um, stresses to do with conflict at home with your parents, but it is also to do with what might have happened to you 10 or 15 years earlier when you were a young child. It's the cumulative effect of early life experiences with current stressors that actually explain the onset of mental health problems. Recently, as you know, a celebrity uh, died of suicide, allegedly suicide. And uh, soon after that news broke in, another news came in that a young school going kid also uh, met the same fate. So this, uh, you know, what we call a copycat suicide that happens, this trigger, do you think we, too much we are hearing this uh, suicide attempts or suicide committed by youngsters, what is driving the young population towards suicidal thoughts? So definitely, you know, I think the point you're making is, is, is a possibility that, you know, when young people are distressed, and distress is common for many reasons, and I'll come to that in a moment, um, that when they read that their icon or role model has, has committed suicide, that that might, for vulnerable adolescents, trigger a suicidal act. It's perfectly possible. That said, there is no general evidence that talking about suicide increases the risk of suicide. In fact, I think the opposite is the case. That when you talk about suicide, provided it's done in a sensitive way, uh, you know, so for example, you don't blame the person who's attempted suicide. Um, you really see suicide as an act of desperation that can be prevented if you provide, uh, for example, a hopeful intervention. Then I think suicide, uh, talking about suicide is a very positive thing because what it does, it, it takes an issue that is often shrouded with shame and fear out into the open. So you have this pride uh, study that, uh, finding that you have had, this uh, gadget-based uh, intervention? Well, the gadget-based intervention is only the one we're testing in Goa. Yeah. What we did in Delhi was a counselor. So if you combine both, can we have a program where we can have the best of both yeah. and together can it become a pan-India kind of a approach? Well, Shashu, that's definitely my uh, I hope. You know, I'm a, I'm a scientist and I, you know, I believe that this, uh, in the mental health sector, sadly, there are a lot of charlatans. There's a lot of like, I can cure you with this kind of remedy or that kind of remedy. You see this also in medicine more generally. And I don't believe that we should ever promote interventions unless they've been proven to work. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see it with COVID-19 right now. Mm -hmm. There are so many different interventions, you know, hydro uh, ACQ, you know, uh, uh, you know, antiviral drugs and you mm -hmm. know, even uh, Ayurvedic remedies. I think we have to be very careful when people are desperate, we mustn't be peddling things that don't work. Uh, and so my uh, way of working in Sangat has always been this, that we need to design interventions, we need to test them, we need to get them peer-reviewed, published in the world's best journals. Then we work with the authorities to think of how we can scale these up by making sure these interventions are brief, they're delivered in real-world settings by lay counselors. We know that there is no supply-side problem because these sorts of individuals are available in plenty. What we now need is resources to scale it up, and that's the process we're starting now. Just because the paper has just been published, now I can begin that conversation uh, with policymakers on how to scale up and take it far and wide. So what does your paper recommend? What are the key recommendations? That so the key need? recommendation is that as a first step for any adolescent who's referring themselves because they are having mental health difficulties, the first step is to have a three to four session problem solving intervention delivered over three to four weeks. Now, if we find a gap, in Goa, if we find it has the same results, we may not even need the counselor. It may be that the lab teacher or any teacher can do a weekly lab in which kids who are feeling stressed can come and complete the game. But it's important to remember that the intervention does not help everybody. No one size fits all in mental health. And so it's also important to remember that for those who don't respond, we do need to offer a more specialized uh, a mental health intervention. And PRIDE is currently testing such an intervention that involves maybe five to ten sessions, but it is technically much more sophisticated uh, than problem solving. Do you see any role of parents in this uh, that, uh, team of things that you are looking at? Yeah, absolutely. Parents are critical, you know, um, especially for younger kids. Uh, because, of course, as I mentioned earlier, early life environments are so important. 
in shaping your mental health. Uh, and for younger children, the most important environments are not school but at home. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, parents do play a very important role, but the real challenge, Ashwat, is engaging parents. Because parents are, have very busy lives themselves. And in my experience, we try to work with parents in the secondary schools. Uh, it's very hard to get parents to come to school. And of course, we can't be going home because you know, we don't have those sorts of resources. So ultimately what happens is it becomes an intervention directly with the adolescent. We may send information with the adolescent to the parents, you know, but the classic parent engagement has been very hard for us to achieve. We are all saying that COVID has made this negative impact, that a negative impact, psychological impact. But we all know that every cloud has a silver lining. Do you see COVID has done something positive as far as putting everybody's focus back on mental health? Not that everybody's uh, talking about it? Yeah, well, you know, that's a small positive. The damage done by COVID to mental health is enormous. Especially since we're talking of adolescents. This is an age group, you know, Shashwat, which is the most vulnerable for the development of mental health problems. We know this is a, it's a scientific fact. Uh, mental health problems are already the leading causes of sickness and death in young people, for example, through suicide. Yet, young people's lives have been totally disrupted by COVID-19. Their education has come to a halt. You can see the whole Career mess about examinations. You know, one day it's there, one day it's not there, etc. The stress and uncertainty is enormous. You're right. Those who are finishing education are facing a job market that is completely vacant. Um, and of course, for young people, a very key part of development is uh, interpersonal relationships, peer relationships, mm -hmm. and that you know, physical distancing has stopped. So their whole lives have been turned upside down. And alongside that, do you ever hear young people's voices? No, we don't. We don't even bother asking young people. How should their lives be managed while we try to control the From their point of view. Yeah, from their point of view, where are the young people, you know? And so I do think that we are going to see much more harm to mental health. Uh, of course, there is a greater conversation about mental health, and that's welcome. But I think we need to go beyond talking about mental health mm -hmm. and beginning to doing something about mental health. And an example of doing something is, for example, is this intervention, making sure that every school in this country um, uh, provides this sort of intervention. Obviously, right now, it will have to be done remotely uh, on telemedicine platforms. But we should now see not just talk, too much talk, actually doing something. So, uh, before I conclude, I would like you to tell us that what key uh, steps you, what number one Sangat can lead and what you expect from the entire society, every member of the society, the education, uh, the education fraternity, parents, the other uh, connected uh, players and stakeholders, what kind of uh, platform or what kind of solution oriented the approach that we can have in the post-COVID world. So Sangat is already engaged in this. Sangat is uh, completely and totally uh, engaged with what do we do to respond to the mental health needs of people in India, which was already a very major issue before COVID-19. Our mental health care system does not reach more than 5% of our population. So how do we reach not only the remaining 95%, but address the huge burden of mental health problems that are going to emerge? And so we're building a digital platform to help train providers like school counselors, community health workers, doctors and nurses in these brief evidence-based psychological treatments so that you don't have to even come to the classroom. You can learn entirely on your smartphone, very carefully designed uh, uh, online courses, followed by examinations and then case-based learning and supervision, all done digitally. So that's what we're doing. And I think for, for the rest of society, for families, for schools and for policymakers, recognize that mental health is not just about talking whenever there's a suicide of a celebrity. No, we really have to understand that mental health is a central part of our well-being. It is a central part of who we are as human beings. And it is now time to grasp this opportunity and put the science that we have into action. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your uh, wonderful words and uh, insightful guidance. Uh, as you heard, uh, viewers, that uh, those uh, suggestions made by Dr. Vikram Patel, that although Sangat is uh, making its all the uh, all the efforts possible to guide the society towards a solution-oriented program to deal with mental health, but it is time that we no longer work in silos. 
but we come together as a society, every stakeholder takes owners and starts working towards finding a solution towards mental health challenges because the post-COVID world is not going to be normal anymore and what we have on plate is much more than we could have ever imagined. This is Shashwat Gupta Ray with my colleague Anvesha Ghosh for Uncovering India. Thank you.